It's Ismail Ishaib on Twitter for the Twitter guys. Uh, this is a picture taken in Russia a couple of months ago. I'm coming from Algeria. I was born in Algeria like 23 years ago. And uh, I had a company actually there, a startup. I founded a startup called SMS Bridge and uh, with a couple of friends actually. So this picture was taken at a national business plan competition that we won. We managed to raise some good money and um, we was like selected one of the top 100 startups in the Mediter Mediterranean region. So then I went to France to study a bit and then I found myself in Germany where I'm currently living in Berlin working at a company called TSOPI, where basically I IT, pro, uh, IT solution providers working with a bunch of European, uh, uh, European companies and doing some cool stuff with mobile and web applications as well. And so that's for my day job and uh, for my weekends and on my spare time I'm working for a global organization called Make Sense and what we are doing at Make Sense basically trying to promote social business. But that's something we are going to, to see uh, afterwards, hopefully. First, I want to start by a quick story about a man, about this man. Who knows who's this guy? So, yeah, thanks. So this is Professor Mohammed Yunus. It's the uh, Nobel Peace, Peace Prize winner 2006 for his work elevating uh, poverty around the world. So uh, back in the mid-70s, Professor Mohammed Yunus was a simple uh, professor of economics at the university in Bangladesh, his home country. And uh, it happens that this university was located near a, uh, a village, a poor village. Unfortunately, Bangladesh is one of the poorest countries on the world. So uh, this, this university was near this village and uh, by walking around this village, Professor Yunus had to see what uh, poverty is and he had to see what the indignity of poverty is. So faced with this challenge, Professor Mohammed Yunus decided to act and decided to find a solution to solve this problem, this problem of poverty in this particular village. So he was like musing and thinking about it and he thought like, what if in fact, I take a, a young woman and I give, him, uh, give her a small amount of money and then with this small amount of money she would create her, her own business and like for example buying a cow and then with this cow uh, like selling the milk from this cow and then paying back the, uh, the loan the professor would give her. And that's exactly what, and then hopefully by the end of the year she would own the cow and build a successful business and this is how she would break out of poverty. And this is exactly what Professor Yunus did. So he gathered 42 people from this uh, village and it actually it took him, not this one, it took him $27 to start. So he took $27 from his own money and then he divided uh, uh, with the, those, uh, those 42 uh, people. It was 42 women actually, mostly beggars. And the, uh, the thing is that by the end of this program, they bo 42 people break out of poverty. So the, uh, the experience was so thrilling that Professor Mohammed Yunus wanted to replicate it and wanted to uh, expand this, you know, this initiative uh, into the whole country and by doing this solving the poverty issue. So he, want to, uh, he, he then went to build a whole new bank, a bank which is called the Grameen Bank, which means ban the Bank of Villages. And the Grameen Bank would be a new bank that do everything like uh, not the same way as conventional banks. So whereas like conventional banks go to uh, work with the rich people, the Grameen Bank would work with uh, the poor people. Where, and with the Grameen Bank, it would give you microcredits, so micro loans, and with no collaterals. So that what, that's exactly what he did. And, and actually, Grameen Bank is a pretty successful bank t now, uh, today. So it's like 8 million borrowers worldwide. It's every, mostly everywhere in the, country, uh, in the world. 98% are women. So the lenders have 98%. And they, they have uh, managed to give uh, 10 billion of loans since the beginning of this uh, amazing adventure. And uh, so that's, that's pretty cool, isn't it? So, but the problem is like, okay, so it's good to give money to the poor, but the problem would be, uh, yeah, those people won't, you know, won't give back this money. How come these poor people would give back this, uh, 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 this, uh, this amount of money? But let me tell you something. 97%, that's the amount of money that have been repaid from all those, from all those loans. Whenever we have, wh wh wherever we implement this program, whether it's in India, in Bangladesh, in the US, we have always noticed the same, 
uh, uh, repayment rate, which is 97, 98%. So it was, uh, it was really exciting and really inspiring experience. So now it, it is, and the Nobel Prize is, is a kind of recognition that the micro, what we call microcredit, so this, the microcredit is like giving those small loans, the, the exactly what the Professor Yunus, Yunus uh, did in Bangladesh with, and with the Gar Grameen Bank. So uh, microcredit, so the no Nobel Peace Prize is like a recognition that microcredit is one of the most effective tools to, uh, uh, to fight poverty. So whenever a government want to initiate some anti-poverty programs, they would put some microcredit and my microfinance uh, thing into it. And so we have like, and we have like really beautiful programs running in, in Morocco and Tunisia. And uh, the thing is like, it's not just government or the Grameen Bank that are implementing those kind of programs. We have also, also a lot of other organizations that are doing microcredits as a means to fight poverty. One of them is Kiva. So Kiva is a uh, US based organization. And they're doing a peer-to-peer -peer mi peer -peer microcredit. So they have this uh, web application, kiva.org, where you can go. You can see a bunch of uh, micro-entrepreneurs in the developing world, and then you can give them a small amount of money. You can start with $25, basically, and then give the, this amount of money to this micro-entrepreneur. The micro-entrepreneur work in his, uh, like, and launch his business, and then he would pay you back and because it's internet so you can interact with this with this guy and you can follow up with him and see what what's really happening with your money another uh, another inspiring project which is not related to microcredit this way but always to uh, to fight poverty is a bar, bar food college so bar food college was founded by a guy called Roy Bunker in the 70s starting of 70s and uh, what Roy Bunker did and he, he, was, he wanted to, you know, to solve this poverty problem in India, basically, as well. And what he did, he took like, a bunch of women that didn't know how to write, didn't know how to read, and he teached them engineering. He teached them how to build solar panels. And it, it was a really successful program. So those women uh, uh, w w learned how to build solar panels, and then they went to other villages, and they started building uh, solar panels there. And actually, the, uh, the school that... Uh, uh, the uh, Barfoot College, basically, the university where the, those women uh, are learning, is uh, the energy of this school is powered solely by solar panels built by those women. So it's, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And uh, back to Europe, another kind of project, it's called MAMU. Um, I don't know if you know MAMU, but I'm sure you will hear ab about them uh, pretty soon. So MAMU is a uh, fashionable, really fashionable company doing s scarves. So they have this really beautiful fancy, fashionable scarves, but it's not just a fashionable company, it's, it's not just a fashion company. Actually, it, those, those scarves are made by women in Latvia that cannot work otherwise. So it's also, it's doing business, it's selling really beautiful scarves, but at the same time, empowering w women to, uh, uh, to, to, go, to break out of poverty, basically, and uh, to fight employment. So, actually, there's a lot of those guys working on you know, super inspiring projects and working on those social uh, problems we have and trying to solve those social problems we have. So whether it is poverty, education, climate change, you know, just you name it. And there is a social entrepreneur for that. And that's exactly what we call social entrepreneur. So a social entrepreneur is a kind of mix, you know, between Gandhi for, do for the doing part of it and between uh, the late Steve Jobs for the business driven vision and the innovation. So that leads us somehow to define what social entrepreneurship is. Basically, social entrepreneurship is what the so those social entrepreneurs are doing. And it's, uh, we are at the dawn of such fields, so it's really hard to define it precisely. There's a lot of definition out there. One of, uh, the, one, the one that I like the most is this one, like it's applying what we've learned at our business schools and uh, uh, applying this entrepreneurial spirit to solve to and to address a social issue, basically. So it's a kind of mix, a middle between a, a non-profit organization, an NGO, and a, a, a regular business. So the difference is that in a, in a social enterprise, in social venture, you have to have, uh, you have to make money, so you have to be self-sustainable, but at the same time, you, it's, not it's not your main objective. Your, your main objective is not to maximize profit, but rather to maximize your social impact. And if you guys are in the upper right corner, it means you've been robbed. And there's a lot of those non-profits that are trying to maximize their 
uh, uh, financial uh, try to maximize their profit. So, okay, so it's, ha it's really hard to define social entrepreneurship, but let's just uh, define what social entrepreneurship is not. And uh, just a quick note, this is the hashtag used on Twitter to talk about social entrepreneurship. So go ahead, just ignore the rest of this talk and start tweeting about social entrepreneurship. And uh, so what social entrepreneurship, first it's not a charity. So social entrepreneur, a social venture is not a charity. In a social uh, enterprise, you have to have a business model so that you have to be, uh, so that you are a self-sustainable self venture and you have to, so you make money so you are self-sustainable and you don't rely on donation uh, solely. It's not also marketing. So b basically it's not like green, what we call greenwashing. It's not like a, uh, some activities led by, by, uh, by a corporation, by a company, so that it, it raises its brand image and it, 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 seems, it would seem uh, like cooler. It's social entrepreneurship is really about effective actions done at a local level with a real impact. It's not a hippie movement as well. So it's, it's really, it's not like weirdos. So it's like really brilliant people, brilliant mind leading this movement. And it's not something, uh, just a, it's not just a trend basically. It's here, it's something here to stay. I hope you guys are still interested. Okay. Okay. Just quick pause. Okay, so I had this chance to work with the amazing social entrepreneur. His name is Simon Redfern, and I'm actually working at his company, uh, which is called Tsopi. I really wanted to have like this, you know, this stuff to to pass the slides. Well, so the company is called Tsopi, and we are providing those IT services, working with those companies, building some, you know, really nice web mobile and web application using some Ruby on Rails, Django stuff. So that's basically what we are doing to, uh, uh, that's how we make money. But at the same time, we have some internal projects that, uh, that we are working on. And one of those in internal projects initiated by Simon is, uh, is, a, uh, is a project to fight a social problem. And this social problem is corruption. And we all know that corruption is a really, really big problem. So for example, in Europe, it costs every, each year, each and every year, 30, more than 30 billion euros lost due to poverty. That's only in Europe and that's only in one year. So I'll let you imagine how big it is. And, the act, and we have heard a, lo a lot about some uh, scandals related, corruption scandals related to even charities. So that's, you know, pretty sucks, I would say. And uh, actually, well, we, we, we think that corruption is possible because the whole financial system is built on the top of a uh, information hiding, uh, built upon a, a opacity that, is, that simulates security. And we would say that this opacity ha has also led to a financial crisis that we've, uh, that we've he heard of recently. And the, the, uh, what we believe is like this opacity, this lack of information lead to corruption and other financial malpractice. And those ma this malpractice will lead to more distrust and more um, and more lack of information. So basically, it's a vicious circle. And this is exactly the vicious circle that we wanted to, broke, to break with the uh, Open Bank project. I should buy a license. So, so this is why we want to break with the Open Bank project. And it's basically, the Open Bank project is a European initiative led by TSOPI. And uh, the idea of the Open Bank project is to open up financial transactions. So it's a means to raise the bar of financial trans uh, transparency. So the, w the Open Bank project would, be, uh, would let you as a user to share your uh, financial data and financial transaction in a secure and trustworthy way. So for example, a charity would grant access to its financial data, financial transaction to all of its donators. So me as a donator, for example, for instance, I would give uh, this charity uh, a small amount of money I don't know, a couple of euros, and then I would say uh, I would see where this money, uh, uh, where this money really goes. Is it going to this social project in Africa that I'm told, or is it going in someone's pocket? And how we are doing this by giving you access to the uh, to the raw data, to the financial transaction of this NGO. That's what the Open Bank project basically allows. So it's like moving from a on-off binary mode of uh, accessing financial data 
to a sliding scale of financial transparency. So those NGOs would say, hey, I want to be transparent. I want to share my financial data with all my donors. I want to share my financial data with, all my, uh, with, the, with the public. And then Open Bank Project offer them this, uh, this opportunity to, d to do it. They can share it with, you, you, you basically would be able to share it with your wife, with your accountant, and uh, uh, things like that. There is a lot of uses. A political party would, would, also be, uh, would, would also use it. So we can see where the money really comes from and where the money goes. So it's a really a social tool to fight corruption and to raise, most importantly, to raise the bar of financial transparency. And actually, our vision is more, much more than that. Our vision is, on the long run, is to build a whole bank pro project in order to raise, uh, to promote financial transparency and to push for transparency in the banking world. So. I would ask you to, to go to this web website. So we have this petition on change.org. And so please go there, sign in the petition, promote, social, uh, promote transparency in the banking world, and share it with your friends, and so on and so forth. And we are also for the Facebook uh, addicts. We are also on causes. So as we are, we are needing you right now for the, uh, uh, for the Open Bank project, other social entrepreneurs also need you. And, uh, However, the, how, how the, this social entrepreneur would be brilliant and amazing, they always need help from other people. So this is why we've seen a lot of organizations that have been built in order to help and support social entrepreneurs. And the um, Akumen Fund, Ashoka Foundation, the Grameen Creative Lab, to name a few. And one of those uh, organizations, one really recent organization, is called Make Sense. I'm really happy to be part of, of this organization. Of what, we, what we are doing at MadeSense basically is like we're trying to connect people with social entrepreneurs. Uh, like we're trying to connect social entrepreneurs with people that, that can help them basically. And uh, the project was found like, uh, a year ago by a guy called Christian and uh, his friend Romain. They're both French uh, business school students. They've uh, shortly been uh, joined by a couple of Facebook friends, including me. And what we are doing that makes sense is, uh, as I said, connecting people with social, uh, social entrepreneurs with people. So uh, we have a pool of social entrepreneurs all over around the world. And those social entrepreneurs are facing problems on their uh, uh, on daily basis. And so we are bringing those problems to people that could solve them. So we gather people around a, a, a challenge and we, uh, we're trying to together to solve this challenge, uh, the challenge of this social entrepreneur. How we are doing it? There is two ways. We have this uh, application, web application, makesense.org, where you can uh, connect with social entrepreneurs. But most, most important is that we have those offline meetings, what we call holdups. So a holdup is a creativity brainstorming where we gather people uh, around the challenge of a social entrepreneur and we are trying to brainstorm an ideation pro process with the people so, so that we come up with ideas to solve the, uh, the problem uh, of the social entrepreneurs. I would say it's pretty fun and pretty effective. We, uh, we have 200 social entrepreneurs in our pool uh, and we have like more than 3,000 Facebook fans and I'm sure I would, after this presentation, I would have more fans than that, right? Cool, and uh, yeah, and it's it's pretty, you know, it's it's really interesting. This, I mean, I don't know if it's a, a relevant metric, but it feels like you know you're famous, so that's cool. I put it on the slide. We have 170, more than 170 gangster. So a gangster is a member of the Make Sense community. So it's like someone like me, so that that joined the project and is helping uh, social entrepreneurs. We've organized 80, more than 80 holdups, those uh, those creativity event. We uh, more than 80 in 15 different countries, and we are coming mainly from 30 different countries, and uh, we've done all of this in nine months, just only nine months. So and with zero funding. So believe it or not, that's all that have been done with zero funding in nine months. So I was happy to uh, to launch the uh, to initiate the Make Sense chapter in Berlin, and uh, since six months and we've. We're doing pretty well. This is a uh, picture taken from a holdup we've done uh, recently there. And uh, we're launching another program uh, based on Make Sense there. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And why I'm doing all of this, it's because I deeply believe that there is a wave of change. A wave of change brought by those social entrepreneurs all over the world. And I'm definitely into you know, surfing this wave of change. I want to join this wa wave of change and I'm inviting you to join this wave of change. And it's not about, you know, selling your house and 
uh, going away in a caravan. It's not a hippie movement, right? So what you can do is you can, of course, launch your social business. That, and I'm quoting so, uh, Professor Yunus. But you can also study social entrepreneurship. There is a lot of uh, uh, big universities that are launching uh, social entrepreneurship program. Harvard, you have uh, Oxford, you have uh, ESCP in France. So, and I'm sure your university is also providing this kind of uh, courses. You can also promote social entrepreneurship. You can talk about it. You can talk about it with your friends, with your coworkers. You can try to, you know, change the whole uh, the whole mindset in your own, in your company. So it. it it will be more ethical and it will think at least about having a social impact rather than only having maximizing the, uh, uh, the, the profit. So, you know, as these guys, those, those brands could reach, uh, uh, could have been able to be everywhere. We, uh, we with social entrepreneurship, we also can be everywhere and we have the tools to do it, right? Uh, what you can do as well, and maybe the most important point is that you can help those social entrepreneurs by working for them, by supporting them through those organizations that, uh, uh, that, that are created. You can sign the petition for the Open Bank project, for example. You can join us at Make Sense, and I'd be happy to see you as gangsters with us and uh, in our mafia. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say volunteer your time for, you, for the cause you like the most. I would say invest in the cause you like the most and then start thinking about an emotional and a social return on investment. So that's, that's the idea. And I think it's, it's up to us to change the, the whole thing. It's all those social, uh, social problems we've, uh, we've seen, it's up to us to solve them. It's our generation that would solve them. We are the, those uh, next problem solvers. There is no other superheroes, you know, that will come and, you know, solve the, all those issues. At some point, we thought this man would solve, will change the world, but you know, it's obviously not. Now we, we, we know that it's obviously not him. So we are these next uh, superheroes. It's 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 up to us to bring this change. And you know, as we. As we have, you know, we, we, no longer, we no longer hear about polio, about smallpox. Uh, we ended slavery. We even ended the dominance of windows. Come on, guys. So we can also end it all, though. We can also solve all those social problems uh, we're having today. We're having in uh, 2011 after Chris. So I'm sure that we can solve them in uh, after social entrepreneurship. That's a bad joke, I know. And uh, so it's up to us to make the world to, uh, to, to change the world and to make it not sucks, I don't know how you say that, and to bring this cha change that is uh, really, really needed uh, uh, for the world of today. And it's not about just solving the most, uh, the most urgent issues and the most urgent challenges that are facing us. It's about making sense of our lives and bringing meaning in them. So that's it for me, that's what I have. Thank you, gracias for your attention. Don't Please don't forget to sign our petition. And if you have any question, I would be happy to answer them, basically. Uh, hi, uh, Tahar Alami from uh, Morocco. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. It was a great uh, presentation. Uh, and I just want you to add a more problem to your presentation, yeah. which is Internet Explorer 6. Please. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you're right. I definitely agree. You know, that's a big social problem. <laughs> Uh, hi. Hello. Um, hello. Uh, I would like to know uh, how uh, do we do to join uh, Make Sense? Okay, so it's a really simple. So Make Sense is a really open project. That means that everyone can join. And uh, as I said, we are supporting social business. We are supporting social entrepreneurs, and uh, we are eager to have any energy that would, you know, that would uh, uh, help us on this uh, on this mission. And the idea is like just get in touch with me. You have my. Uh, email address somewhere here so if you have any I'm on Twitter as well so if you have any question of if you want to join make sense just get in touch or, uh, with me or send an email to join at makesense.com and it and then the process is uh, straightforward basically yeah and I, I'm really eager to see more uh, more people here we are we're in so France Berlin in San Francisco China but we have no presence in Spain so I'm, I would be really really happy to you know to introduce you to the mafia Hi, uh, let's Hello. take an example. Yep. I'm an NGO, 
I earn a lot of money from uh, donors. I use this money to pay a financial uh, consultant yep. who advise me how to fructify this money. Yeah. Uh, like financial, uh, like financing uh, big projects uh, with the uh, Citibank. Uh, just think about uh, the tsunami in southern uh, uh, Asia. So why should I share my financial data with you and with people? Uh, maybe they will not give me. Uh, they will uh, not give me more money than they already do. Okay. Uh, why this bad advertisement? Okay. So, what you guys have to know, and maybe I didn't explain the what we believe. Like we deeply, we deeply believe in the open bank project, and that we that the open bank project is something that would raise the bar of transparency, and uh, with we believe that bringing transparency. In, in this particular field, it's good for uh, for the society as, as a whole. We don't say it's it's easy; it's really challenging, and that's why uh, we are excited about this project. And the idea you you, you, t you told is like for us, the adoption of uh, the open bank project would not be uh, driven by uh, business by the market, but would be driven by uh, by the society. So me as a donor, I would you know ask the uh, this ba my bank. To, uh, no, I would ask the NGO to share its data, and I would say, "Hey, this NGO is sharing its data. Why not? Why not? You're doing this. I mean, if you don't, you, if you don't do it, if you don't adopt the open bank project, I would not give you uh, money anymore. So it's like a we're working toward a social pressure. Of course, it's not it's not up to us to uh, you know what we are doing. Like we're gathering a uh, couple of early adopters. So we have a uh, we have, for example, a um, a NGO in in uh, Brazil, which is called uh, Transparencia Hackers, and they they've managed to do a wonderful crowdfunding campaign. They raised 10,000 euros, and then they saw, they say, "Hey, we are Transparencia Hackers, right? We we need to be transparent." And the banks we uh, the, the 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 banks we are in, they didn't don't allow us to be tr as transparent as we want. So what's the uh, what the solution? And then the open bank project is a uh, you know a normal straightforward solution. So first step with the open bank project, try to gather those NGOs that are into the transparency mindset. And I'm sure there is a lot that want to be open and want to be uh, uh, transparent. We as a company at TSOP, we want to share the information, all those financial data, with our uh, with all the employees basically so first as a first step having those early adopters and then trying to push and the petition is for that to push for a social uh, 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 a social pressure that would you know that would uh, widespread the adoption of the of the project and it's it's the same way for political parties it's it's of course not the inter in the interest of political parties to adopt it but if you as you know as a citizen you would say hey i would vote for you but just you know do like the pi pirate party, for example, just to name a, a party. Like, do as the pirate party and adopt the uh, the open uh, bank project, and then you know. So it's a long long run project, of course. But we are deeply believing that the society, you know, can do it. We, as a society, as a citizen, we can do it, and we can have the social pressure. And we are uh, we're really happy when we see uh, things like you know Twitter and the whole open source and Web 2.0 movement, which brings and the open data movement, basically, which brings a lot of you know opening. And we s we we've seen that this openness has brought a lot of uh, benefits whether it is for the b businesses, whether it is for the society as all, or the individuals. Okay, I think the idea of uh, open bank uh, is very interesting, but uh, uh, people who uh, want to uh, be I in this project uh, must have some kind of uh, b uh, banking engineering and banking uh, technology so it's not easy uh, okay. uh, we must uh, use all the technology we know in uh, banking so yeah it's i think it's interesting but it's not it's very complex yeah. so i don't think we can do it uh, in the the way you you describe okay. in in your uh, speech it's more complex than I'm this. really happy that you asked this question basically because I I think it, that this part this technical part is the uh, least uh, difficult part for us 
We are an engineering company. We've managed to uh, brew 25, 25 organizations around this project, mainly uh, engineering companies as well. So working with banks, we have two banks in our consortium. So this technical part is for us, as uh, at least, is the easiest uh, step. The uh, the most yeah the most difficult step would be this adoption and getting other banks to adopt the project and uh, so on and so forth. So basically the integration, the doing the platform is our business. So that's how we want to make money basically from it. So I would say it's the easiest part. And of course it's complicated. And as I said, this is why it's exciting. This is why I want to, uh, uh, I left my startup and I'm working uh, with this company in Berlin. Hi, it's my, I'm Hello. from Granada. Daniel. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice. Uh, thinking about the idea of open bank, I think not even ethic banks, ethic banking will allow to show every customer account details. So, but maybe it should, it would work in a way that at f Facebook works. I mean, your friends can know how, how much money and how much you own. Yeah. And that way it, it's, it's kind of private and public at the same time. That's it. Actually, what I talk about a sliding scale of uh, privacy. So we are not enforcing people to be open. That's not the open bank project. But what we are doing at with the open bank project is at least we are offering the chance for people to, uh, uh, to, to say and to decide if they want to share their data with the public, if they want to share their data with their wife, with a girlfriend, and, uh, or if they want to keep the, the data private, right? So it's, it's of course, uh, within the open bank project that you can say, hey, I don't want to share my data. You as an individual, you don't have this mu that much of interest of sharing your data, right? Even though we think there is a, a, a strong, uh, you know, a strong incentive to do it. And y you talk about Facebook, that's also a really good, interesting point because, well, Facebook is ki a kind of, you know, uh, motivation behind the project because in Facebook we are mainly uh, sharing our privacy and disclosing our privacy to get something that benefit us from, from the people. And it's not something, it's just this social relation that we are building by, by sharing my pictures, so by uh, disclosing my privacy. So we, we deeply believe that you know, human beings would be able to and would be maybe not happy at the first time, but at some point they, they would, that they would disclose their privacy in order to get a higher, uh, uh, a higher reward for them and then for the society as a whole as well. Yes. So, so is uh, open banking legal? I mean, what are some of like, am I as a business allowed to d discuss my financials? You know, what, what's your current research in Europe? So basically now you can't do it. It's not even like at legal, uh, at the legal aspect of it. It's just that you can't. And there is actually some services uh, that allows you to um, to get access to your financial data or share them basically with actually you can do it with one person but then you have to sign a lot of papers it's legal but you have to you know sign a lot of papers and things like that so it's pretty complicated and then what what the other uh, like automated solution does like you need to uh, what we they are doing what we call screen scrapping so you need to pass them to give them your password your login and password and then they they do the job for you which is you know kind of which breaks the term of use basically and it's kind of tricky giving your password to someone else so no the, the question is if I take uh, my accountants gives me my paper papers by the end of the year can yeah. I just publish those papers online you know what are the well actually of that? for companies you're so at some point you have to to do this you have to publish some uh, some key uh, key financial data right and then as I said you can share them with another person but the, I mean another person could could have access to your bank account like have access to your the whole bank account but then you need to sign a lot of papers and uh, so on and so forth Any other questions? Uh, I just want to tell uh, people uh, who knew about uh, the Mexis project that I, uh, I took part in a oh hold yeah. up uh, last week with uh, Ismail. 
uh, and it's very fun. A uh, lot of ideas, a uh, lot of a uh, lot of people. Uh, and we, w what uh, what was the topic? The main topic of uh, uh, the World we Up? were working on a uh, project called Jerry, which yes, is a uh, do-it-yourself uh, do-it-yourself server. So it's like a server in a jerry can, basically. It's really cool, pr really pretty. And uh, yeah, so that, that was the social entrepreneur. The social entrepreneur, uh, Romain, uh, had this project. He built those this, uh, with his team this, uh, this project, this ser uh, computer server in a jerry can. And uh, the idea was how to use this, uh, this computer, this do-it-yourself computer, so that we can uh, decrease the digital divide. You know that a lot of people in the developing world uh, that don't have, unfortunately, access to the uh, to all those tools we have, to the uh, to all this technology we have. And then the idea was how can we enable those, empower those people to build their own, uh, basically build their own uh, uh, technological technical infrastructure. I, it was pretty fun, yeah. 